Hello everyone. In today's command tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at suppression of enemy air defenses, one of the most difficult tactics slash strategies out there. Because of how powerful and effective aircraft have gotten, these tactics, as well as the systems and counter systems and counter counter systems, have gotten incredible. So we're going to be taking a look at today is we're going to talk about pretty much the differences between these two. We're going to talk about the different kinds of SAMs. We're going to talk about some of the tactics. We're going to talk about the best weapons to use, and then we're going to talk a little bit about the different mission types. So let's go ahead and talk about the types of SAMs really quickly. You basically have two different major families of surface to air missile types. You have what they call strategic, which are basically protecting air bases or really, really expensive assets. Once you put them down on the ground, they tend to stay there, which means from a game perspective, we always know where they are. Strategic SAMs include things like the SA-5, they include the SA-2, as well as the SA-3, although in modern times, there's actually mobile versions of especially the SA-3. Um, the American equivalent of this would be something like the Patriot missile, which generally, once you put it down on the ground, it's going to stay there. And obviously, the fancy one like Aegis Ashore and Thad and stuff like that, those are all strategic SAMs. The other kind of SAM you get is what they call a tactical SAM. This is basically a short to medium range SAM. They tend to be highly mobile. They're very, very difficult to detect and engage. A typical example of one of those SAMs would be something like the SA-8. Over on our side, we have the Chaparral. Um, if you go over to uh, England, they have things like the Rapier and stuff like that, depending on the individual application. Generally, these particular types of SAMs are designed to be deployed with main army units and protect them kind of organically. Because again, the idea is if you're on the offense, you want to make sure you bring your air defense with you. These other systems just take too long. Now, where you're going to get in the weird zones is the um, Russia, is the former Soviet Union, really, really, really enjoyed developing strategic SAMs that were highly mobile. That's when you get things like the SA-12 as well as even like some versions of the SA-10. So anyway, um, I always like to show this chart real quick. So basically, everything I just said is inside this paragraph. By the way, this comes from fast.org, in case you're curious. These guys do a great job. There's also another really good website if you like it. If you type in Air Power Aus, Aus, basically for Air Power Australia, these guys have the most incredible resources for this kind of stuff that you could possibly imagine. And a lot of things I've learned have come off of this particular website. I mean, just look at it. I mean, if you wanted to pick, for example, the S300 PMU2, you get a massive article on the radar and all the different technology and how it's set up and how long it works and all this other stuff. It's an amazing resource. Take advantage of it. So anyway, going back to my picture here. So basically, you can see here that our really, really long range, 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 range strategic SAMs are basically going to be out to 100 kilometers or more. Um, missing from this list, of course, is the SA-5, which if I click on it real quickly, you'll know has a massive range. This is 155 nautical miles. That's insane. And you'll also notice that some of the other SAMs, although they have very, very long range, Range, have limited altitude or vice versa. Notice once you get down here into the SA-11 category, your range tends to be a lot shorter as is your altitude, but this is a very fast engaging weapon. The SA-6 is kind of a happy medium. The SA-15 and the SA-8 kind of are inside the middle here. The US doesn't really have a lot of equivalents for this because our idea of an air defense was basically using aircraft, which is just a little different philosophically, but again, good chart to notice. So let's go ahead and take a look. So next, uh, those basically the two systems. Uh, SAMs come in two different flavors as far as seekers goes. You have a radar seeker, which requires a radar to basically look at you in order to either guide the weapon directly, that's command guidance, to follow a beam, in which case it is to point the radar where it wants the missile to go, or it also has the ability to basically illuminate you. This is the SA-5 again, and basically the missile will home in on the strongest radar source, which is then you because you're being illuminated. The other option we have as well is we have the passive, which is basically infrared red or TV, these missiles are nasty because you get no radar warning that they've been fired at you. So these are they're in a category of their own. And generally, if you're dealing with these particular types of weapons, you're dealing with much shorter ranges and your best defense against those is just operating outside their engagement envelopes, which we'll talk about. All right, let's talk about tactics. So the first thing you want to do in every single time you're going to be doing anything involving surface-to-air missile batteries is you need to figure out where they are and what kind they are. There's a lot of different ways to do this. Of course, uh, if we wanted to do our pretty standard method, we could come up here like this. We could scoot up to, uh, let's go ahead, browse scenario platforms, and we could go ahead and switch to the other guys. Now look at this. Unfortunately, this doesn't help us because every SAM system is basically going to be represented in this scenario. So that's 
that doesn't really help us very much. We need to figure out where they are. Now, if you remember I was saying a minute ago, strategic SAMs tend to be fixed and we tend to know where they are. This is awesome because we actually have a pretty good idea and obviously we know the ranges because we have good intelligence. The mobile SAMs are going to be a little bit more tricky. So to detect those, there's a couple different methods. The first thing we can do is we can use something like uh, satellite intelligence or we can use photo recon. This is awesome. If you use a low altitude recon naturally, you're going to get shot down every once in a while. So kind of keep that in mind. We can also do electronic reconnaissance, which is precisely what we're going to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my handy dandy base right here. I'm going to get myself a pair of MiG-25 RBs, which is something that Libya would have had. And I believe they still have a couple paws. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this guy. I'm going to send him right over to the border. I'm going to grab his buddy there. as a can't hide from me. I'm going to go ahead and send him right over here as well. Now, these aircraft are cool because they have the ability to basically detect the electronic emissions of other targets. Now, a professional SAM crew in a good mission designer will never ever allow you to detect their fire control radars which is the radar we want to kill until the missile has already just about been fired so we will not be able to detect them some scenarios will provide for battalion radars to be activated keep in mind most sam sites you have what they call the fire control radar which is going to be responsible for guiding the weapon and then you're going to have the search radar which is going to be responsible for trying to locate targets so anyway i'm going to go ahead and let these guys kind of cruise on over here pause. So let's take a look at what's going on here. We have a couple of really good pieces of news. The first one is this particular SAM site is emitting electronically in all directions. Stupidly, since it's emitting in every direction, that means we're detecting it in two different directions, which means we can actually triangulate its position, which is exactly what we just did. So we know that this target, this whatever this radar is, is going to be accurate in here. Had I sent a single MiG-25, we would have a much more difficult time pinpointing its exact location. I'm actually going to mark its position so I can come back to that a little later on. Um, let's see, short range target indicator. So a target indicator radar is usually something that's tiny, mounted on the back of a truck somewhere, nothing too, too scary. So I'm not worried about it too much. And it's also a 2D system, which simply means it's not going to know our altitude. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and let these guys do their thing. Okay, we'll go ahead and pause. We picked up so many more radars here. We've got a mobile over here. Let's see what we can find out about it. 3D, that means it's going to be a modern system. It's also, what's the range on that? I missed it. Target indicator again, so that probably means something fairly portable. We got something down here. What do we got here? 3D long range. Okay, so this is something more strategic. Uh, we got something over here. Can't quite pinpoint that just yet. So um, we're going to go ahead and grab our uh, buddy, our MiG-25, and we're going to fly into enemy territory here to go ahead and cause some trouble. Let's see. Is there any idea we're getting? Okay, that's, that's a little more precise. So go ahead and mark that position. Mark that position. Keep in mind, these are not the fire control radars. These are the search radars. And it looks like he's more like there than he is there. That makes more sense anyway. Okay. So the problem we're getting now is we're able to get a pretty good fix on these radars, again, because of the geometry. But we're not getting a great fix on these radars here. So I'm actually going to order him further into Chad territory. And really cross my fingers that I don't get too close to the SA-5, which I just did. So the SA-5 is more than capable of engaging me at that distance. So um, we're basically going to be able to peek, and then we're going to have to get the heck out of there as fast as possible in order for him to come pretty much right here at the edge and really cross my fingers that I can react quickly. All right, so that, I think that's enough information. We're going to go ahead and mark this one real quickly. We'll mark this one. Again, just right-click mark position. That one is just too ambiguous. I could send him all the way around. The stupid thing, by the way, to do would be to shoot him straight this way. If you do that, he's going to get knocked right out of the sky by the SA-5. But we're still unclear. Oh, there's something else we picked up. No, I'm pretty sure this one and this one are the same. All right, let's get out of here. That, that We've had enough fun. Let's go home. So ideally, we'd go ahead and get ourselves some more precise, some tactical reconnaissance. But unfortunately, we just don't have those assets today. So I'm going to go ahead and fly these guys out of here. Nicely done, MiG-25s. You've been very helpful today. So now we have a fairly good idea of where the enemy search radars are, which is usually pretty indicative. Oh, actually, we got some good information now. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and mark this position right here. Just another freak chance that this is probably by the airbase. That just makes sense. 
So now we've got some pretty good intelligence of where the enemy search radars are. If we can blow up every single one of these, theoretically, they're going to have to switch on the battalion radars, which is going to make them even more obvious. Unfortunately, the scenario isn't set up so that they automatically do that. If we had human players, that's probably what they would do, because that's what they do in the real world. So let's go ahead and start dealing with some of these targets. The first one is, let's go over to my little tactics page here. We want to go ahead and locate and recon. We located a few SAMs. We've actually located none of the short range ones, which is not atypical. We know our enemy a little bit. We'll deal with that in a second. And then you'll notice my next tip here is to destroy the high altitude long range SAMs and then make your way down to shorter range. The reason this is awesome is because basically once you cripple their high altitude capability, you can operate from high altitude basically and you're immune to the targets. So let's go ahead and deal with the nasty SAM first. Normally what I would do, of course, is I go over here and blow up this P-70 and just kind of wreck it to blind them. And I'd also, of course, go and track all these down, but I want to kind of leave those there for now. So anyway, how do we deal with something that has a range? of 155 nautical miles. That's insane. So let's take advantage of some geometry here. Now, I've, the Earth is curved, which is actually a good thing for us. And you'll probably know that because this Earth curves, if you hide behind the curvature of the Earth, or if there's a, a natural obstacle here, you cannot be detected. Hmm, what does that mean for us? Well, check it out. So this is 155 nautical miles. So if I set that to 155 nautical miles, that means that we can hide behind 15,647 feet of ground that they can't see us at. Keep that in mind for a second. That also means if we close to, let's say, 100 nautical miles, we now have to uh, hide behind 6,450 feet of ground in order to go ahead and protect ourselves, which basically means that he's going to be looking over the top of us if we're at an altitude of 6,400, for example. If we're at an altitude of 6,500, he'll still be able to see us at a distance of 100 nautical miles. Now, one thing that complicates that if you look really carefully, you'll notice the fact that he's got an elevation of 1,200 feet. So you have to make sure you add that elevation into any calculations. The other thing is, uh, if you're familiar with the geography of Chad, you'll notice that this is flat, and then there's a huge mountain range up here. Now, if we're going to make some kind of attack, we could probably use this mountain range to get us within firing range. So our problem is, though, is our firing range is 40 nautical miles for anti-radiation missiles. Nuts. That's never, ever going to happen. They will slap us down. At 40 nautical miles, look at this, we'd have to be at an altitude of about 800 feet in order to be safe and still fire the missile. But a lot of times those missiles have limitations on what altitude they can fire at. So this is going to be difficult. So how are we going to do this? We could do this the expensive way, which would basically we're going to get together a big group of guys with anti-radiation missiles and CBUs and go. So you're sitting there going, why don't we just order them to do that, but do it at low altitude? I'll show you. That's 408 nautical miles they have to travel out and back. There's simply no small fighter that can do that kind of a distance at those kind of altitudes. Now, you're probably saying, so why don't I just travel to this point or so and then go underneath the radar horizon? You're absolutely correct, and that is an awesome way to do it. But because of some of the limitations in the manual control over waypoints and stuff like that, you're going to have some difficulty setting up stuff like that. But um, we're going to try it anyway, just for demonstration purposes. So let me go up to my airbase here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab some fitters. Now, fitters are um, basically swing wing attack planes. I'm going to go ahead and equip them with some AS9s. I'm just cheating just to make this a little bit quicker for us. And then I'm going to get some MiG-23BNs, which are just MiG-27s, really, the export version. And I'm going to go ahead and load ourselves up with some extremely whatever I can get that gets me the longest range, to be honest. Oh, I saw 500. No, I didn't. Yes, I did. Ta-da! Oh, that's lame. 500 nautical mile strike radius. Let's go ahead and ready that immediately. 500 nautical mile strike radius. Ugh, that sucks. Well, I guess uh, you do what you got to do, right? So our Sukhois, again, if we were a little closer or if we were playing with aerial refueling, we could probably set up a refueling track right here with, of course, some uh, Comet Air Patrol and literally refuel everybody, go down to zero feet and scoot over here completely immune to the enemy surface air missile batteries. Again, by the way, the reason I know that he's got that altitude limitation is if you actually click on it, you can scoot down to the missile itself and it will tell you its limitations here. So not only does it have a limitation of the radar horizon, but it can't hit anything that's lower than 650 feet above the ground. So keep that in mind. Also note that it has a minimum range, which we can take advantage of, and a maximum range, which, um, yeah, we can't really take advantage of that, unfortunately. All right, so this would be the standard way to go about this. Go ahead and create a mission. Strike it. 
go to a strike. It's going to be a land strike. Press OK. I'm going to go ahead and grab everybody. Uh, we're going to go ahead and grab some of these two, throw them on there. I'm going to assign our handy dandy fitters to be our escorts. And one thing I'm going to do with my escorts is I'm going to make them in very large groups. You're probably sitting there going, that's kind of weird. No. Whenever you're using arms, you're going to want to make sure you fire a lot of them together or you're never going to get very far. I'm going to reduce its maximum threat response radius. Everything looks good. Everything looks good. Everything looks good. That's going to be its target. You're probably sitting there going, it's going to take 12 floggers to destroy this thing if they even get that close. And you'll see what I mean. So we go ahead and unpause and watch this. Watch this. And pause. So one of the nice things about this game is all of these waypoints were procedurally generated. If you actually look really carefully, you can see that there is a waypoint four right there. See it? So what we can do is we can actually tell them to dive when they get into the dangerous range. So what is the dangerous range on the SA-5? Basically out to about here. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab that point, and we can actually tell it to, oh no, we can't tell it to do that. Well, it just made a liar out of me, which is kind of a shame if you ask me. Go ahead and close that, because that, and now we've got an infinite loop. Hey, we fixed it. <laughs> so unfortunately, I just kind of have to do it the old-fashioned way, which is fine. Go ahead and pause it. They've already got a missile en route right now. I guarantee it. Yep, I win. So I'm going to grab this group, and I'm going to order them to go down to minimum altitude. Or not, I guess. Apparently, I, I can't manually set their uh, altitude for some reason. Oh, well. So we'll do it conventionally and see what happens here. So you can see the missiles are coming in. And here comes the casualties. <laughs> All right, let's see what happened. Let's go to losses and expenditures. I lost four MiG-23s out of that. I went through every single one of my anti-radiation missiles there. And you can see, what did I get out of it? I probably damaged one of their SA-2s over here, and I blew up the SA-5. You can't win a war if you lose a quarter of the airplanes with every single strike you launch. That is simply not acceptable. So we're going to have to take a look at a slightly different way to approach this, and I think I will. So one of the fun ways to do this, I call this the cheese method, by the way, in case you're curious, is you basically bait the missile system into firing, and then you waste the missile by either flying it into the ground by diving under the radar horizon or behind some terrain, or you fly in and out of its engagement envelope and have it just waste missiles that way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate this. This is, again, extreme cheese. I'm going to I'm going to launch the nice try this time because he's going to be very appropriate for this demonstration. There he goes. Let's go ahead and grab him. And I'm going to fly him over here. Watch this. Don't worry about not knowing all those enemy radars are. I'm not too, too paranoid. Again, I just want to show you the strategy. And pause. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn on his range. I'm going to do all units. See how I know his range? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to order the nice try to fly towards him. When he gets into the engagement envelope, the SA-5 will launch. And then I'm going to order him to leave the engagement envelope. I always call this the sawtooth method. You're sitting there going, this is so cheesy. All right, watch this. I'm going to turn on God's eye view for a minute here because I want to show you how effective this is. Ooh, that was actually a lot closer than I like it. Watch this. <laughs> Did I mention this is extreme cheese? <laughs> is that not amazing? So uh, that only took about 25 minutes, and we went through, uh, let's see how many of his missiles we've gone through already. Um, they've gone through 10, and a typical battery has 36. We could do this with two airplanes at one time and literally win this like lickety split. So the other way to do this, I call it porpoising, which is a pretty effective method. Let's go ahead and uh, reduce time again. 
So the other method you could do, if you want to do that, that, that that's a lot of fun. By the way, that works against the S400. You just have to do it like 64 times, but that's okay. That's okay. So the other thing we could do too is we can take advantage of the radar horizon and do the same darn thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab this guy and order him to go down to medium altitude. I'm actually, uh, I'm not going to tempt fate here. I'm going to stay outside of the engagement envelope. Did I mention reconnaissance is amazing? And now I'm going to point myself right back towards the enemy. So this time when we enter the enemy's area, he's going to launch at us just like always. But the difference is since we are so low, the missiles are going to fly into the ground before they fly into us. We have to time this very carefully here. I'm going to go ahead and dive back down. I said dive back down. I believe he timed it right. Nope, we didn't time it right. All right, let's pop up to 25,000. So this one, you can actually go like this for this strategy. So watch this. So now he's going to launch at us in just a second here. Well, the weird thing is we're not getting a lot of warnings with this fire control radar, which kind of bothers me a little bit. Like I said, we're going to cheat just a little bit. If we're going to fly towards him a little bit, he's more likely to launch at us because he's working out the DLZ, which is dynamic launch. So oh, there it goes. Again, we're cheating a little bit here, but watch this. I'm going to order him down below the radar horizon. And we'll switch to a God's eye view here. And they fly right into the ground. <laughs> so now I can order him to fly back up again. And as soon as we get the missile launch warning, we're just going to fly right back into the ground. If anything, you can just go up to 25,000 feet and then pop 12,000 feet. And you can find one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi dive. <laughs> and we just wasted another two of their missiles as we dive below the radar horizon. So that is a more of a tactical way to approach the problem. Let's go ahead and uh, do this properly this time, though. So that works. That works against any of the long-range weapons. Let's now do this correctly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get myself a group of airplanes, basically the exact same airplanes I would have had already. So let's get ourselves... I think we need a 3K is Libya. Yeah, I was right. We're going to go ahead and load ourselves up on some of this long-range stu good stuff. Um, RBK is long-range. That works for me. So we have our standard group of four. So the better way to do this, if you have this at your disposal, is to actually use ECM assets. So if you're going to do this, you're going to have to do a lot of this. Probably think a Badger J does the job here. Can I do a Badger J? Badger J, Badger, Badger, Badger. Um, a Badger J. Yeah, that works for me. Cool. Nope, that's not the one I wanted. I want the Badger J. That's the one I want. Hey, we got it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use OECM, this offensive and electronic countermeasures to get us close enough to attack the enemy unit. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll point everybody in this direction. And I'm going to go ahead and set their altitude to medium altitude. Actually, did I set that to high? Yeah, that's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. Now, one thing that always happens whenever you do this is the fighters will die faster than the escort aircraft. If that happens, you are out of luck because they will fly out of the line of sight of the actual jamming technology. All right, let's take a look. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, speed up time again here. Again, I'm just trying to save a little bit of time for demonstration purposes. Okay, what do you notice? Hopefully you realize the fact that our handy-dandy uh, flight here is outflying its escorts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my flight and order them to go down to 400 knots. I'm going to take my escort and order him also to 400 knots. And of course, I'm going to cough. Oh, look at that. Good thing they stuck together the whole time. Now, let me look at this from a 3D view real quickly. Because this is going to make it a little bit more clear what's going to happen when it goes wrong. By the way, make sure you turn on the jammer before trying to use the jammer. Observe. What do you notice? Yeah, exactly. Our jammer is down here at 25,000 feet, jamming line of sight to the radar. These guys are up here at 36,000 feet. They are above the jamming of this radar. So what we're going to have to do is grab them and say, hey, guys, get your, get your butts down at the correct altitude, please. Now notice how quickly they dive as opposed to our little jamming buddy. The jamming buddy, actually, to be honest, is way too far away. I'm going to cheat him just a little bit. Again, you can sit here with missions and get this very, very precise. By the way, if you try this tactic with a mission, you're going to be disappointed. Why do you guys insist on out flying? I told you a manual speed of 400. Manual speed of 400. There we go. Again, this is, I don't, the game doesn't do a good job of telling you precisely what everybody's doing, but that's okay. So now we're kind of cruising along. This is the form you want. 
Nice, this is perfect. Oh, we can shut that off. We, I'm not worried about that right now. So check this out. So these guys are now cruising all up. You can see the beautiful volcano over there on the left, by the way. Yeah, right there. Very pretty. You could never mount a radar site on the corner. Let me actually go click on that real quick so I can show you. What you can't see is um, this is a lip of an incredibly large valley. It's really neat if you haven't seen it on Google Earth. You couldn't put a radar station on the corner. There'd just be no place to put it. Anyway, back to the fun. Okay, so now what's going to happen is our SA-5 is going to be sitting there trying to target these guys, and every time they basically activate the targeting, they're going to get a lot of bad news on the radar scope, and they're not going to be able to get a precise target. If I actually switch to the other guys real quick, you'll notice that I keep getting a lock on these guys, but then I lose it for just a moment as the jamming basically catches up to you. That's going to be our key. So now what we need to do is when we get a little bit closer, we're going to order everybody to come down to a lower altitude. Notice this is very difficult to do with missions. This is something you're going to have to do manually. And like I was saying earlier, seed is, there's a lot of tactical pieces you have to get right with a seed mission. Notice our SA-5 buddy has not launched on us yet. The reason is the SA-5 buddy is being badly jammed by this one. Jammers always go with fire control radars first when they're doing jamming. Then they concentrate on other types of radars. So now we need to get in a distance of about 9 nautical miles from the SA-5 in order to successfully defeat it. Let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit here. Oop. Let's go Control-D. That's a distance of here. So basically this little valley right here. Why 9 nautical miles? Because he can't launch if we're less than 9 nautical miles away. However, we also need to get to an altitude where we can actually deploy our weapons properly. I don't know why it's giving me trouble today, but that's all right. Database viewer. It's all right. I know what it is. It is called a RBK 500. Oh, that's the one. What is our launch altitude? 200 feet. Cool. So obviously we're going to do about 1,000 feet above ground level. So we're going to continue to move into his engagement envelope here. And I'm going to go ahead and let's see here. It's 102 nautical miles. Let's go do some quick calculations. 100 nautical miles, I believe, is 6,500 feet radar horizon. So we want to be a little above the radar horizon. So let's come down to, let's say, 20, uh, 15,000 feet here. Medium altitude, please. Medium altitude, please. Thank you. Good. Okay, let's go back to 3D view for just a second here because I want you to be aware of this because when you lose one of these aircraft because you did this too aggressively, don't come crying to me because it's going to happen. If that SA-5 launches, by the way, it's almost a guaranteed hit. Okay, check this out. Notice that from this perspective, this is what the bad guy sees, that jammer is still blocking the line of sight on the actual enemy fighters. If that were not the case, you'd get a free shot. If you had something that looks like this, for example, you could hit those fighters and not the jammer. So you can see that's why we're kind of doing it all the way out here because that slant angle is not as great. Come on down to 12,000 feet. Perfect. Now we're golden. We should be able to literally drive up and knock on the door. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my Ukoi 22s and I'm going to have them attack with everything. You're probably sitting there going, uh, you don't need that much. You don't understand. This is two battalions worth of SA-5s. This is a tremendous amount of targets. And you don't want to waste it if you miss. All right, that's good to go. Let's go ahead and speed up time. Notice we have not been fired on yet. Spoke too soon, right? So you're sitting there going, what, what, what happened? What happened? Why, why did they suddenly attack? Observe. Notice, for whatever reason, these teammates decided to climb back up to 36,000 feet out of the jamming pattern of our Badger. This is a known limitation, and they're going to fix it at some point. So to uh, simulate this concept, because I'm not going to go back and uh, refly everybody by hand, of course, you could always sit F9 and grab these guys and uh, try to set them down to medium altitude. But you can see that there are definitely some other issues that need to be kind of solved from this unit in order to get that issue solved. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna cheat even harder. I'm gonna go ahead and click right here. I'm gonna put in another Badger. Let's do offensive ECM. He's at their altitude now. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on his jammer. I'm just gonna order him to do a donut because that was not fair. Again, how would you have known that happened before you lost all three of those aircraft? 
Don't think so. Not fair, not fair. But definitely something you want to be aware of when you're doing your own missions later on. Notice, it was only the guy at the front of the group who did things correctly. No. Okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. Those are just going to fly into the ground in a second. Yep, like I said. Okay, that wasn't cool. But it was also a wonderful demonstration. You want to always be aware of all of your units at all times. So keep in mind, this is the line of sight from the SAM site. Notice the guys he's shooting at, he can see perfectly past the actual jamming units. Not fair. Again, the only reason he's launching on us is because the um, line of sight is allowing it to happen. So you have to be so careful. This almost would have been easier with a single airplane. I'm not going to protect you guys all afternoon. Again, why do you insist on being so high? Let's go ahead and set these guys. Made it super clear you need to be operating at a lower altitude. If anything, we can send them even lower now. Go down. And now I should be able to get rid of that other badger. Yeah, notice the badger's line of sight with the radar now, so now it's able to jam him properly. All right, everybody's diving. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that other badger. We don't need him now. Okay, now that everybody is at the correct altitude, we can continue our mission. <laughs> so now what's going to happen is these guys are going to overfly the enemy SAM site, and they're going to drop all sorts. This is how it was supposed to go. Notice, even at this distance, there's no burn through. And now that we're so close to the SAM, we're able to... Oh, yeah, goodbye. Careful, though. There's always some jerk with an SA-7. Let's watch fly this guy in our CBUs, and here comes the next guy coming up in the back. And that should do it. Got it. All right, everybody go home. You get a Christmas bonus. By the way, when you order them to return home, they're going to ignore what altitude you sent them to, and they're going to fly right over enemy SAMs. Okay, so that takes care of the SA-5. Yes, we had to cheat a little bit, but you can see why we had to cheat a little bit. And it's just things you're going to have to be aware of. Had we done this with a mission, it would have ended like we did earlier. Okay, let's go ahead and now look at our next topic. So uh, first of all, like I said, know the enemy. We were able to defeat this guy because we jammed him. We were also able to defeat him because we got within his minimum range before the jamming didn't work. Um, now we're going to go ahead and take a look at using, we looked at terrain. We talked about running out of ammunition. And now we're taking a look at standoff weapons and missile defense value. Okay, so you're noticing these guys are getting shot at. That's okay, I'm just going to delete them anyway. Because these SA-2s have done a pretty good job. All right, let's reload everything real quick. This looks good. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get rid of that SA-5 because we did kill it, right? We got it. We got it. It was fair. It was fair. Okay, let's do it. So now how do you deal with something like an SA-2 and an SA-3? This is like the standard thing you're going to have to do a million times. Well, this is one of the few times where you can just use a mission to do the deed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and define an area. Keep it relatively small. You don't want it to make it too big. I like to call this a kill zone. Surround the area that we're interested in just like that. Go ahead and create a mission. I'm going to call a seed patrol. This works really, really well, by the way, if you do this with uh, unknown location SAMs. We're going to set this to a patrol. We're going to set this to seed. Press OK. Close that for a second. You'll see why. Now I'm going to scoot up to our airfield. I'm going to grab my Sukhoi 22s. I'm going to order them to go ahead and load themselves up with these um, anti-radiation missiles. They're not any harms. So I'll give you that. I'm going to grab all my MiG 23s. You want to go ahead and use whatever is going to give us a really long range here. That's looking pretty good. I'll use that. And let's see here, we want to make sure our yeah our reconnaissance bats are ready to go. Let's go back to that mission. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign all of my MiG-23s and all my Sukhoi-22s to this mission. I didn't need that. I accidentally clicked it by accident. Okay, so that means these guys are all going to choo-choo. So we want to order this entire group to launch at the same time. If we don't do that, you're not going to have enough concentration of missiles to do damage. Now, as far as the attackers goes, we're going to order them to be in sections of six for maximum deployment of weapon. Keep in mind, the Sukhoi 22s only carry a single missile. If this were like an F-18, we could do this with two, because <laughs> obviously, you know, they carry four at a time, so that'd be eight missiles. So that's unfortunately a limitation of what we're working with here today. So that's all set. That's all set. Okay, 
This is important. The altitude you travel over the combat zone is important because if we click on this SA-3, for example, we'll notice that his maximum altitude for engagement, let's go ahead and take a look, this is very important, is going to be 46,000 feet. We can't get over that. So no matter what, we have to be in their engagement zone. However, we know that the SA-2 has a limitation where it can't shoot at things over 1,000 feet, which means our station altitude, we can actually define it as something really, really funny, like 950 feet above sea level, which nullifies the effectiveness of the SA-2. Interesting. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and let this run normally. I'm going to do one thing differently, but I'm not going to do it until I get there. Now keep in mind, keep in mind, had you crippled the enemy's early warning radar, they would not have as much warning that we're coming. Unfortunately, our very, very excited Sukhoi 22s up in the front chose to fire these extremely expensive anti-radiation missiles at a group of air traffic control radars, which is not a bad thing. Because watch what happens when we get close. Bingo, it worked. Let me pause. What just happened? So our SA-3 saw the incoming missile, freaked out, activated his fire control radar, and look what we responded with. Had we not done it that way, it would have been too piecemeal to be effective. So right now that SA-3 is actually tracking that incoming missile for the air traffic control radar. It fired. Unfortunately for that SA-3, it's about to get hammered. Unfortunately for us, is that SA-2 now is um, still active and large and in charge as far as we're aware. What you're going to see in a second is the SA-3 is going to shoot a stream of missiles. By the way, why did this many anti-radiation missiles get launched? Well, if we look at this guy and scroll down, you'll notice he has a missile defense value of 7. That means these guys will launch seven missiles every single time they detect the radar. Notice, by the way, this group just launched three anti-radiation missiles at our buddy, the SA-2F over here. Why did that happen? Well, the SA-2F lit up his radar to try to engage the missiles that were hitting the SA-3. Now, did we hit this SA-3 or did we not? Uh-oh. We'll find out soon. Now, by the way, these missiles had the ability to remember where a target was. If they didn't have that ability, when this guy shuts his radar off, we wouldn't be able to do it. But what he's going to do is turn his radar back on to try to shoot these missiles down. And in doing so, he's going to give them a target to go ahead and guide and hit. Goodbye. I don't think that... Oh, that did. Done. Now, check this out. Our MiG-23s are now arriving on station at low altitude with a ton of cluster bombs to finish the job. You're sitting there going, what was that? Why'd they turn around? We've done the job. We did it. Unfortunately, these guys are not smart enough to go ahead and uh, blow the rest of them up, but that's all right. Okay, everybody returns to base. We're good to go. Now, what if we're dealing with an unknown threat? And this will be our last piece here today. Well, unknown threats are the tricky ones. I'm going to go ahead and remove that SA-5 again because we killed it earlier. Remember, we didn't cheat. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at an attack. So we know that there's some enemy command bunkers here. There's like a bunch of desert forts. And uh, we want to go ahead and attack these. Intelligence suggests there's probably some enemy SAMs in that area. Well, the strategy is going to be exactly the same. I'm going to go ahead and define an area. I'm going to go ahead and add, whoop, whoop, before we do that. Got to go ahead and get ourselves our Sukhoi 22s loaded back up at those arms again. Keep in mind, if we didn't have these anti-radiation missiles, we would have to do this the hard way, which means we'd have to show up, wait for us to get launched on, and then try to wreck them, which would be very difficult to do. So I'm actually going to equip these guys with AS-7s. You're going, huh, what's that about? You'll see in a minute. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing. We'll do a Seed Patrol. SIPA. Seed Patrol. Okay, we have no idea what type of threat exists in this area. There could be high altitude SAMs, low altitude SAMs. Our hope is that by the time we get there, we're going to collect enough information in order to actually wreck them. So I'm going to go ahead and grab everybody, get all of my MiG-23s and all my Sukhoi 22s, and I'm going to add a Fox Bat. You're probably saying, why are you adding a Fox Bat? Well, the Fox Bat's kind of important because he has a really, really good device on board called a camera, and he'll be able to identify SAM launches and types of SAMs better, making our life a little bit simpler. All right, that's all set. I'm going to uncheck this right here, and we're good to go. Let's find out what happens.
off they go. The hope here is, is that we're able to attack the enemy by detecting their fire control radars. There we go. Observe. So this missile was fired at the flat face A, which is simply a search radar. I believe this is a search radar down here. Now, hopefully, and again, cross your fingers here, what's going to happen is the enemy radars are going to try to engage that missile. You can disable this behavior, and careful mission editors will do this very precisely. So he's going to come ripping in. So watch what happens. We detected another radar immediately. I guarantee you it's a fire control radar. It is, and it's from a Krug. Oh, we're getting somebody else. Now notice, if we didn't do groups of six, we would not be able to put this many harms downrange when this happened. Oh, I hear his missile launching in my ears right now. Might have gotten shot down, might have fallen short, but this is the important part. These are the missiles that are going to be engaging the enemy radars. Of course, these are the SA-4, by the way. What a creative little vehicle this thing is, if you've never seen one of these before. Look at the size of that missile. Basically, they wanted a portable long-range SAM. And here comes another shot at a pad hands. And we're good. Now, you're probably noticing now our MiG-25 has arrived in zone. He's at 60,000 feet. You can't see anything from 60,000 feet. <laughs> he needs to get down to an altitude where he can actually be useful. I'm going to send him down a little bit. Meanwhile, our, our big group of these guys still have anti-radiation missiles if they need to be used. Hey, I didn't tell you guys could return to base. By the way, if this happens to you, check your WRA. Double check to see what your loadout setting is, because a lot of times they will accidentally run out of missiles, and then they will say, oh, I've made, made my engagement, now I need to leave. Don't do that. Just keep an eye out for that, that's all. I'm just going to assign them to mission, SIPA. And now notice, they're engaged offensive again. We did it! Or did we? Watch this. Now our guys with PGMs are going to show up, and they're just going to wreck those disabled SAM sites. Good job, everybody. Good job. Nice. Okay, so to finish this up today, we're going to do one more engagement. And uh, this time we're going to make it kind of interesting because we're going to do it the American way. What's the American way? Allow me. Do, 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 do. <laughs> what do we got here? Okay. Uh, I just I messed up. Sorry. There we go. Yeah, we could hit that too, but uh, why not, right? Uh, let's go ahead and remove these targets from the list. All right, flat face A, you can have two. P70, you can have two. Our SA2F, you're going to need two. This SA2 is going to need two. This SA3 is going to need two, three. One, two, three. And this SA-5 is going to need everything else. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. Whoop, apparently I've allocated 10. Fire! Good game, guys. Go home. Ah. <laughs> so, uh, how are you guys doing today? Hopefully you're finding this somewhat interesting. Sorry these things are so darn long sometimes, but um, I try to be thorough, and I'd rather be thorough, because you can always skip me. We win. <laughs> that was fun. Uh, keep in mind you can do that from a submarine too. Okay, enough of that. Last thing. Last thing, I promise. So let's do it the American way, but against a modern enemy unit. I happen to have good intelligence that suggests there's some very, very dangerous modern Russian-based SAMs over in this area. So how are we going to destroy them? First things first, we've got to detect them. And uh, lucky for us, we have some EF-111s at our disposal. These things are amazing because they will have the ability to basically actually launch them in two different groups here. They have offensive ECM like you would not believe. So we'll go ahead and launch those first. There we go. I'm going to send them over here. Grab that other flight as well. And I'm going to go ahead and send them over here. And the other thing I'm going to do while I'm at it is I'm going to set up a refueling track, which means uh, this incredibly long range is not really an issue. Go ahead and do support. 
go ahead and do a support operation, press OK. Let's go get my KC10s. You guys have been eyeing these uh, assets this entire time, I'm sure. There's my KC10s. Uh, we're going to send them all up at the same time. I'm not going to do that. Single aircraft. Uh, oh, actually, no, I like it that way. I like it that way. All right, we're going to go ahead and send those guys up right now. Looks good to me. Now let's get even uh, more American here. We can go over to unit actions. We can add some satellites. Go to the United States. We'll get ourselves some mass int. Uh, what do we have here? DSP, which version of the DSP? Go ahead and add you. We'll see what else we can add here. I don't think we have any of the keyhole ones. Uh, let's see, we have you as these two. We're gonna add those two satellites. We're gonna add that one. Go ahead to image sat. I don't think, well, nope, we haven't developed them yet. I uh, gotta see, who do we have right now? And we don't have any of these good ones, but it's all right. Satellites are satellites. They'll do us a good favor in a couple minutes. All right, we've detected that enemy unit already. Looking good. All right, let's go ahead and define our kill zone here. Call this kill zone. Go ahead and create ourselves a mission here. Whoop, we want to make sure we deselect. We did. We're going to say seeded. Said, why not? We're going to do a patrol. We're going to set this to seed patrol. Press OK. We're going to go ahead and get ourselves everybody. The CJ. We're also going to get ourselves my favorite, favorite, favorite vessel for this, or vehicle, I should say. Uh, and that is a tornado. Why do you say, why? What's so good about a tornado? Allow me to show you. I have a 950 nautical mile strike radius, and I carry five missiles. Come get some. That are in weapon range. Okay, that's set. That's set. My CJs, of course, are going to be taking care of the deed side of things. Looks good. Looks good. Looks good. Looks good. Uh, we're going to set that up. All right. Have fun. Keep in mind, we have a refueling track, so we can stay there all afternoon being annoying. Okay, so now what are we going to use these EF-111s for? Well, we're going to go ahead and actually use these guys to start jamming the other bad guys as fast as possible. So what I'm going to do is set up a ring of jamming. So I'm going to go ahead and, first of all, break this group up, grab him. I'm going to set him over here, turn on his OECM. Grab Stinger number two. I'm going to order him to go right here, turn on your OECM. Grab this one over here, break this group up. Grab Stinger three. Turn on your OECM. You're going to go over here. Actually, I'm going to order you to do it like this, so it's a little bit safer. Grab Stinger 4. I'm going to go ahead and order you to turn on your OECM as well. And you're going to go ahead and scoot down here. Actually, you know, we're going to go over into the next country, because uh, who cares? Keep it like this. And we're now nice and irritating. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, good. You're good. Okay, you got a little bit too close to whatever this is. Notice we're able to precisely identify the types of enemy radars we're being engaged with immediately because we have such sophisticated electronic stuff on board. All right, so now we're jamming in three dimensions. Why are you going so far? Get back up there. All right, we're now jamming like crazy, and we can have around-the-clock jamming. Meanwhile, our F-16s and our excellent, excellent uh, GR-1s, I believe, the good old-fashioned tornadoes, they're arriving in sight in just a moment. They're locking on to something interesting. Watch how many alarms these guys go. Oh, they're all refueling. Isn't that amazing? Yay for logistics. You're going to win a lot more wars with logistics than you're going to win with weapons, that's for sure. Now, my only concern is I imagine these are the F-16s, and they're doing something stupid, like flying directly towards the enemy. Um, yeah, they're doing exactly what I thought they were going to do. I'm actually going to say... Why don't you guys go get some gas? Wink, wink. Because uh, what's going to happen is they're all going to get themselves blown up because the good old-fashioned, um, like I said, we haven't launched any alarms yet. So let's go ahead and refuel automatically. All right. Okay. You also need to refuel automatically. You need to refuel automatically. I think I made these mission groups a little bit too small. That was stupid. Sorry. I apologize. Uh, let's see here. Refuel automatically. Zoom in a little bit. Uh, I'm going to order you guys to refuel automatically. You refuel automatically. You refuel automatically. I need to at least allow those other aircraft, the tornadoes, to get into position. Oh, no, that's a tornado. Okay, here we go. <laughs> one down, next one. But
Here come. Did we do it? <laughs> All right, let's see how that worked. I think I lost three airplanes that time, but it was two S-300s, an S-15, an SA-19, and an S-300. So we'll see what happened here. Watch this. Losses and expenditures. Aw. Meanwhile, everything. Oh, there's more than I thought. All right, hopefully you found that tutorial kind of enlightening. Um, again, at the end of the day, just figure out where they are, what they are, figure out what their engagement envelopes are, and try to engage them outside of their engagement envelopes. As far as best to worst, nothing beats EMP if you have it. Long-range anti-radiation missiles like the Harm, you're going to need a lot of them. Cruise missiles like the B-52. Standoff weapons like a JSAO. JDAMs are amazing because you can fire and you don't have to guide them. Things like the Maverick, you have to get a little close to use these. Finally, CBUs are great. Because, again, SAM sites are not one thing with nine things around them. Um, iron bombs, decent. Rockets and guns, uh, you have to get awfully close to use those. All right. Hopefully this was enlightening and interesting and uh, gives you some idea as to how to approach this very complicated problem. As a guy who does a lot of flight sims, I can say that I don't have as much trouble with SAMs because I know what type they are. I usually know where they're coming from, and I usually can take advantage of the terrain. All right. Enjoy.